Yeah, so here it's just a dry, kind of muddy, but no water. Hard to imagine teeming with tadpole shrimp, fairy shrimp. Potholes are ephemeral. They are temporary. The water falls in there and you have this aquatic system that is there for maybe just a week, maybe two weeks, but they're teeming with life. There are a lot of species in the potholes, but the crustaceans are really my favorite. And the, the fairy shrimp are really neat because they very numerous, very abundant, and you can have thousands in a pool. And then they move around, not necessarily in concert, but they do kind of follow the same path. So it's sort of like this huge ballet troupe. That, and they swim upside down, so you can see all of their legs. They'll have 20, 30 pairs of legs. They're filtering the water, getting um, algae and, and organic material out of the water to feed on. They are shrimp. Um, not like what you'd see in the ocean, but they are in that same group, crustaceans. So this group, um, fairy shrimp, are in a group called the branchiopoda. That means gill, and poda and pod, that stands for foot. And so they actually have their gills that they breathe and acquire oxygen are on their legs. So they have gill feet. And it used to be that they were among the most abundant crustaceans in any aquatic system, in the oceans, in lakes and rivers. But as other organisms evolved, you got pretty efficient predators, and those predators were able to eat the branchiopods that were in permanent water. And so these guys have been relegated to temporary pools where fish and insects can't survive and carry out a full life cycle. So um, these, these are temporary pools. The water aquatic systems are temporary. And, and so the organisms that are in those ecosystems have to have some mechanism for surviving the dry period when there isn't water. The aquatic insects, they fly away, but the shrimp are aquatic, period. And so how do they survive that dry period? Well, it turns out that they lay eggs that are capable of staying alive when they lose almost all of the water in the egg. So I've heard them referred to as being desiccation resistant, but they don't resist drying out. They actually tolerate drying out. And they can lose up to 92%, maybe 95% of their water. And then when you add water back in, they hatch out and are ready to go. You know, we're, we're a desert and the surface of the rock can heat up to probably 120, maybe even more than that. So the organisms that are dormant in the, rock, in the pothole have to be able to withstand those hot temperatures. They are incredibly resistant to other environmental stresses. They can withstand very high temperatures, very cold temperatures. There are fairy shrimp that will hatch at really cool temperatures, like down to four degrees Celsius, or about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can see those pretty much all year round. Um, I've stood on ice and watched the fairy shrimp swim around underneath in the, in the water uh, below the ice. Um, they've been taken out into space. They have taken their eggs out and outside the spacecraft into the vacuum of space, the full ionizing radiation of the sun, brought them back into the, to the spacecraft, back down to Earth, put them in water, and they hatch. Um, and then the other question that comes up that people always ask me about those eggs is, well, if it rains and the eggs hatch, but it only rained a little bit, then what happens? You know, we all say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But these fairy shrimp, 
they're stuck in that one basket. And so Mark Twain had a different take on that. And he said, put all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket. And so they watch that basket by producing eggs that hatch under different conditions. Um, they may hatch the first time they get wet. Sometimes the sediment gets stirred up and so they might get a little bit of light flash. That might be a trigger. The amount of oxygen that the eggs are exposed to might be a trigger. Turns out that even the same clutch will hatch eggs under different conditions. Some of those eggs may hatch and die because the pool dries up, but there are still eggs in the sediment and we call that an egg bank. So they're not evolving, they're not changing um, a lot, but that's their survival strategy. They've got a place in the ecosystem that works and it has worked for a long, long time. There are three fairy shrimp that, that live in these potholes, um, but we only see two of them most of the time. And they're fairly small. They get to be about a centimeter and a half to two centimeters long. But every once in a while, and, and really in very scattered potholes, I've seen um, a species that's known as the beaver tail fairy shrimp. So the beaver tail fairy shrimp is, is quite different from the other two species. The structure of, of the tail is very different and it has kind of a paddle-like tail. It can grow to be up to 10 centimeters long or about four inches. They're, they're so big, uh, it's really quite surprising to see them in the pool and especially when you see them swimming next to the, to the streptocephalus or the branchinecta, which are much smaller. Um, and, and the way they're tilted, the way those antenna hang out, the females have kind of a turquoise egg sac. Um, they're colorful with the orange on the end of the, of the tail. So the beaver tail fairy shrimp shows up just almost, you don't even know when it's gonna show up. And I saw some last year, but before that, it had been um, probably 20 years since I'd seen any in the, in the potholes here on the plateau. Well, you know, why do they hatch out when there's water in there one year and all of those other times that it rained in that 20 years, they, they weren't there. I talk about belly animals that I study and, and lay down on your belly and watch the, the critters in the, in the potholes. They are really fascinating to watch and, and they're unusual. Um, they're not things that you see just anywhere. So check them out. You know, it's easy, it's actually to, to watch the shadows on the bottom and then kind of focus back up into the water, but then you can see the little fairy shrimp.